There are times when life is just difficult for each of us. Sometimes what makes life difficult for us is when something happens to a lot of people, like when a natural disaster occurs or in trying to live through the COVID-19 pandemic. Many people have been affected. Other times, life's difficulties take the form of something happening to us individually or to those who are close to us. You know, like the death of a loved one or the loss of a job or relationship going sour. When we're experiencing difficulties in life, sometimes it's just hard to understand whether life can still be worth living despite what's happening around us, or if there's something to still live for, or if we can find hope in the midst of what's going on. And what does hope mean when life is not going well for me? Where do I find hope in life, in my life? Can there be hope for others? Today, I want to talk about hope and how we develop hope and how hope sustains us, even in the midst of some truly difficult situations in life. So now's a great time to subscribe to this channel as well as to click that bell so that you're notified of other videos. Hope, it's not something that denies reality. Hope acknowledges what's happening. It knows that times are difficult. But hope is about when, in the midst of those difficult times, we're able to see possibility, the possibility of something being good, being worthwhile, of something mattering. Hope opens us. It extends our gaze to look beyond what's apparent, even as dire as the situation may be, and still see the possibility of goodness in ourselves, in others, in the future of life, in nature, wherever that may be. Hope gives us an energy to move forward, despite what else is happening around us. Now, hope isn't a switch. We can't just turn it on and all of a sudden we're hopeful. Hope is something that we need to nurture, that we need to develop, that needs to come about for us over time. It's, in essence, a kind of spiritual practice, a regular practice that we incorporate in our lives so that we live with hope. For myself, I start every day with a time of prayer and meditation. I go to the front room of my house, which faces east. And when I'm in that room, the sun is normally coming over the horizon. And the room is filled with light, and I see the first rays of the sun. And just witnessing that gives me a sense of hope. The new day is starting. There's new possibility. There's something good in the day to come. It just feels right in that moment. Part of my daily practice is something of a mantra. It's repeating a verse from the Hebrew scriptures. It's a very simple and familiar verse. Today is the day God made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Those words remind me that the day ahead of me is a gift. It's a privilege to be alive. And I'm going to find something in the day that's going to give me joy. That's something that's going to be worth being glad about. That verse orients me to hope for the day. My home office, the computer desk, faces a window. And it's outside of that window that I have hanging a hummingbird feeder. Through most of the year, hummingbirds come and go from that feeder. When I'm working, I'm able to look up from my computer monitor and see those hummingbirds coming and going from the feeder. And they're chasing each other and they're enjoying the nectar and they do the hummingbird things that they do. And no matter how tough my workday is, no matter how much it feels like my day is closing in on me because of the detail of work, I can look up and be reminded that there's something more to life than just what I'm doing on the computer. It's a source of hope for me. You see, hope needs to be nourished. We need to 
establish opportunities for us to reinforce a hopeful perspective because so much in life doesn't want us to have hope. It sort of, many things in life almost work against us. So as we incorporate practices that enable us to build hope, we're able to look to possibility for something good, for something rewarding, that something can be good in my life or in life around me, despite whatever difficult circumstances I'm in. And that's truly a gift. It's a beautiful thing. It's hard to know how to convey what it means to live in hope. Trying to put words around it sound almost empty to me. So I, I want to try to convey this through a story, through a real life story, something that's part of my life. In the 1980s, I did a lot of work around AIDS, the development of AIDS services, AIDS education. And I spent a lot of time with people who were living and dying with AIDS, trying to provide support and care to them. Part of that was my counseling practice at that time. Many of the clients I saw were people who were living with AIDS. As I listened to my clients, I heard them talk about support groups that they attended. There was one agency in the town that I lived in that was funded for support groups. And all of my clients went to these groups and they all were saying the same things. They hated going to the groups. They found that they were more depressed and feeling negative after the group than before they went. They kept telling me that they just didn't want to go. So I pressed on that to try to find out exactly what was happening in the support groups that was such a negative experience for them. And in effect, what they told me was that the time in the group they spent focused on what it meant to die from AIDS. It was all about illness. It was all about death. And it was very hard to keep going back and looking at that over and over again each week. And I agreed it must have been difficult. So I talked to a friend of mine, a close friend who had AIDS himself. He was somebody who also, like me, studied spirituality and had a, a robust spiritual practice. And I said, you know, we can do something different, but I'm not sure what to do. So we decided that we would do a simple group. It would meet once a week and we would have time at the beginning for meditation and then take a break and then do spiritual reading together. And the book we used for spiritual reading was brand new then. It was 1988. And The Color of Light, a page a day book for people with AIDS, it had just come out. I talk more about the spiritual reading as well as the basic meditation we did in the video, Building Your Spiritual Practice. So you may want to check that out. But we met each week and we did uh, this meditation and spiritual reading. And we encourage the people in the group to do this every day in their own life and to keep following the practice and doing the practice and reading the book. And we would talk about that together. It wasn't long, just a few months after we started the group, that something began to happen for the group members. One decided to join a community course. Another, who always wanted to travel, decided that he was going to start traveling. Another person decided that he wanted to volunteer for a nonprofit that had nothing to do with AIDS because he wanted to do something for people, but people different from himself. In other words, every person in the group started doing things. They started living. They started exploring their life again and the things they wanted to do. One person started writing and hope to write a novel. It wasn't long before I got a call from the director of the support groups at this agency who asked, what is it that you're doing in this group? And I explained, you know, we do some meditation and we read and talk about a book. It was pretty simple. And he said, whatever you're doing, you need to stop it. And I asked why. And he suggested that I was giving people false hope. 
So I asked what he meant by that. And he said, well, you know, they're, they're really positive about life and they're doing all these things. Don't they know they're going to die? And I said, do any of them, have any of them stopped going to their doctors? Have anybody, has anybody refused treatment? He said, no. I said, there is anybody putting anyone else in danger? He said, no. And I said, I don't think they're doing anything wrong. I think they're living their life. And again, he said, but they're going to die. So I chuckled and said to him, you know, maybe you haven't realized this, but we're all going to die. Some of us will die sooner. Some of us will die later. And what we do between now and that moment is live. And what the men in this group did was start to live again. Yes, they knew what was happening. They knew there was no treatment, but they didn't allow that to define them they still had things to live for. And yes, indeed, each of them eventually did die because of AIDS. There was no treatment available that was effective then. But I believe they led better, fuller lives, that they were happier, that they found hope, and they found hope by nurturing it through their spiritual life, by developing a positive outlook to see something good was still in them and in life around them, despite the diagnosis of AIDS. And that's true for each of us. In his famous book, Man's Search for Meaning, Austrian neurologist and psychotherapist Viktor Frankl wrote about his experience in a Nazi concentration camp during World War II. As a Jew, he had been put into a concentration camp by the Nazis. And he recorded some of the events that happened, some of what he witnessed, and recounted it in the book, Man's Search for Meaning. Because he was a physician, he was assigned, for the, assigned to the infirmary. Now, the infirmary wasn't a place where people went to get medical care to get better. Instead, it was where people went to die. He recounts a story of one older woman who was laying on her deathbed. And as she was laying on her bed, she could see out a small window to a tree branch that was in front of the window. The wind would blow and the tree branch would move ever so slightly. Sitting beside her, he heard the woman saying quietly, it lives, it lives. There are many ways that one can interpret this story, but I think one of the things that I find important in the story is that this woman, who surely knew she was dying, who was in a horrible place and must have suffered a great deal, could look beyond her circumstances with a sense of hope that something beyond her lived, that there was hope that life would continue even as she was passing from this world. That's what hope does for us. It helps us to look further, to look to something more than what's happening in our immediate situation. Our situation may be bad at a time, but there's reason to hope because we can find something more, something of goodness, something that's life-giving, that may be in myself, it may be in those around me, it may be for myself and for those other around me. And in the case of this woman, it was found simply in a tree branch, in a piece of nature. Hope is what able, enables us to live life in a full and integrated way. It causes us to look beyond our circumstances to find that something more. Hope brings us into a fullness of life that can be rewarding for us, no matter what's happening for us. But it's something we must learn to do every day. Perhaps you know of someone who needs to learn more about hope. Perhaps you can share this video with them. They may appreciate understanding a little bit more. 
Be sure to like this video, share it, subscribe, ring the bell, and know that I really appreciate you being here. Leave me some comments so that I can respond and have a really wonderful and hopeful day. Thanks.